everybody, my name is Professor Swanagic Barry from Barry Science Lab, and today I will be starting a new lecture series on Einstein's field equations. Today is lecture one. And Einstein's field equations. Hello there, Einstein. Um, a quick piece of history before we begin. Yesterday, I heard that the president of China, Xi Jinping, had called up the premier for a report. Are we doing better than America? Now, all of you probably know about the technological race between China and America. And while the premier said, yes, we are doing better in America on GDP, technology. And yeah, it's a warning. You, China is really doing better than America. You've got to stop manufacturing everything in there. And so they asked, well, he asked the premier, are we doing better in science? And the premier said, yes, but it's except in one field, the field equation. And that, the uh, Xi Jinping said, the field equation? What is that? Well, it was an equation made by this Einstein, sir, the premier said. And then, you know what Xi Jinping said? Copy it! Double the signs! And then, the <laughs> said, but, 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 sir, it took Einstein 10 years to formulate. And then, Xi Jinping said, we are smarter than Einstein! We can copy it! Double it! And then, well, the premier walked away, not knowing what he had just saw. And so, yeah, they copied the field equation. So it was 1905, and this guy over here, I looking plump. He was sitting in his patent office in Switzerland. He had just published his papers on special relativity. The thing is, the people didn't like it, the Nazi aligned Nobel laureates didn't like it, even he didn't like it. So yeah, you know, the theory wasn't really used. And it was special, of course. But specialty isn't always a good thing because it was only in certain circumstances. It didn't work when gravity was around because it didn't work with acceleration. So, well, he also challenged the grounds of this little guy right over here. And so, when Einstein declared that Newton was wrong, he broke up with uh, the bond with Einstein. Do you know who woke up? Leibniz. And what he said was, I invented calculus! And then the British ha from Hanover came and took a lot of dirt and dug him <laughs> Volta found out about Leibniz revival. And then Volta said, Mamma mia, dead people can come back? And then everybody else said, it's only a German thing. Oh, so that last piece of history was interesting. But now let's get to the point. It's actually field equation. This killed the ass off camera and took him to the bathroom. With all the kids in the bay. Okay, okay, we don't talk about that here on Barry Science Lab. Anyways, so Einstein's field equation. Uh, by the way, I think he spent too much time here. It's been like three minutes or something. Bye. This is the field equation. Or menu, or mu nu. I have no one idea how to pronounce it. It's like Americans and Brits, okay? There's different pronunciations. So don't get mad at me in the comments. So our menu, which it's actually called the Ricci tensor. Oh no, yeah, the Ricci tensor. And then you have minus one half. Now you may be wondering, what is R? Well, it's the, why am I writing with the back of the pen? The curvature scale. So, no, am I Greek? No, why am I writing R or U as V? I'm not a Greek. Curvature. Scalar, little wind blowing in, and then you have Z menu or mu mu. I have no idea how to pronounce it still, even after like one year of studying this equation. But Z menu is equal to the metric tensor. What is that? Okay. And then you add this to the cosmological constant, which for a high school dropout explanation is um, um, mass, energy, pressure spread out through the world. Density. <laughs> so that's basically it. And then G menu, oh, mu mu again. And then that's equal to, I don't want to get criticized by the British people in the comments. Eight. 
hi, you should know that. G, you should know that. Over C to the fourth, you should know that. And you should know, no, no, you shouldn't know this. The mass energy stress tensor. It's actually kind of hard to remember the name. I keep doubting whether it's the mass energy pressure tensor or the mass energy stress tensor, and then I know it's a mass energy stress tensor, but the pain never stops. And why did I write mu naught? All right, so that's the field equation cosmological constant, which sounds like something sci-fi-y, but I promise this is not a sci-fi story. Quantum, quantum. Seems like you're just throwing and juggling science words everywhere. Right, Saburno? No. You know this already. And then finally, this is the mass energy stress tensor. So, this might seem weird at first glance, but just to get an idea of what kind of crap is about to come at us. Let's first see what happens when light bends. You are in this little capsule with two rooms. You are in the bottom room with no windows, and somebody else is in the top room with one window for emergency. So, basically, one guy is at the top, and he presses the button that turns the light on. So he takes the button on the switch and he presses it. Now, if I saw a big fat red button that I wasn't told to do anything with, I probably wouldn't press it. But hey, this guy is stupid. So now you're in the next room. So this is you. And this spaceship is actually accelerating up. So yes, it is accelerating. How, what speed is it accelerating at? Oh, G, or 9.8 meters per second squared. So, now it's almost <coughs> undifferential from our, uh, un uh, no, oh my God, I'm gonna jumbled up with the words here. But anyways, the light source starts shining. And so let's say it starts right in this corner over here. And then let's say we have it from an earth perspective. So what the earth language see is this, first of all. And I'm gonna copy it since I'm too lazy to draw it again. And it probably won't be accurate if I draw it again. So I copy and paste. And then what happens is, well, since it's gone up, the light has appeared to gone down, at least from Earthling, Earthling's perspective. So uh, let me just do this. So the light has appeared to gone down, and I'm just gonna save this for when I actually know what, where it should be. So the light has appeared to travel down for the Earthling, Earthling over there. It's still going in a straight line. But to you, to you, does it go in a straight line? Well, let's see. From your perspective, it looks, things look. Copy and paste, since I'm a lazy boy once again. And what happens from your perspective is you can't tell it from Earth. What if you're just a stationary little guy? And so, um, well, I, why has the damn thing curved? Why has the light curved? So light appears to bend. But since this is indifferentiable from Earth, does that mean on Earth light also bends? By the way, this curve is heavily exaggerated and can only be achieved if you're going at, can only be actually really seen if you're going at unfreaking godly speed. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.